Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, I want to give you a quick update this morning. It's Saturday, uh, March the 19th of 2022, and uh, I have been in a briefing here yesterday uh, about the situation globally uh, around the world. We're talking not just uh, the Ukraine uh, Russia uh, crisis is going on, but what we can expect as far as this turning into a global war. Not so much that Ukraine create, uh, creates that itself, but it's the opportune time for the collapse of the uh, world economy. It's the opportune time for the collapse of the world system and start anew. And this is just that pretext, that opportunity that is being given. We have discussed things on a multiple level uh, platform uh, uh, this uh, on Friday, early Friday morning. And, uh, and so I will be over this weekend trying to break down that information that I am permitted to share with you and to give you some perspective. Um, we'll be talking about uh, not only the situation with Ukraine and Russia, the United States, NATO, we'll be talking about uh, China, Taiwan, uh, as well as Iran, and a, uh, a war on Saudi Arabia, uh, Israel, you name it, it's going to get covered. And uh, so it's going to take some time. Uh, there will be uh, maybe one or two videos going up on our Patreon channel as well, some information for, for the friends that we have there. So if you're not on Patreon forward slash Israeli News Live, look us up. Uh, you may want to do that. Uh, and even, uh, uh, well, maybe I'll go into that in a little bit there. Uh, yeah, uh, Ella's Animal News, that's our daughter's channel here. Uh, she'll be releasing a video sometime this weekend as well on a story that's not been broken uh, about walruses that have died, thousands of them washed ashore up in Alaska. She'll be sharing that information with you on her channel there. Um, but uh, we want to get right into this, though, this morning. Uh, I'm going to be playing a little bit of a clip here from the Defense Department first. Uh, and then I want to show you a few clips of what's really going on over there because we are being fed disinformation on a grand scale. Defense Department, let's listen to what they're saying about Ukraine. Now Putin's war of choice against Ukraine has been tragic. Russia's invasion has taken a terrible toll on Ukrainian lives, including brave soldiers and far too many innocent civilians. Yet Russia's aggression has galvanized the Ukrainian people, NATO, and the free world. In our conversation, the Prime Minister and I were both struck by the courage and the conviction of the Ukrainian people. They're fighting against huge odds to defend their country. And their struggle is crucial for the rules-based international order and for the common values that Bulgaria and the United States share. Now, it's very distraught, concerning to me uh, when I hear this because we know what's really going on in Ukraine. Uh, and there is a loss of life. There, I do not want to underestimate that or undermine that. That is true. There is a loss of life on both sides. And uh, war is tragic no matter which way it happens. But when you're dealing with a situation, and I'll kind of give you some of the notes that I have here, you know, that, that we're not aware of uh, for the most part. Russia, excuse me, the NATO was building up uh, and working with Ukraine as well as the United States to put nuclear weapons in Ukraine near the border uh, with Russia. This is what pushed Putin over the edge. That's exactly what I was told. It pushed him over the edge. He wants a buffer zone. Now, what's odd is in one, um, uh, one politician said that Ukraine was a buffer zone between us and Russia. Well, if, if that's a buffer zone, then it should be a neutral buffer zone then for both uh, the Western world and Russia. 
But then again, I, I talk like this and I can't help but wonder why am I even speaking that way? Russia should be our ally, not our enemy. Uh, but nonetheless, we've pushed Russia into the hands of China, and that's some of the videos we'll be doing this weekend. It's going to be very tragic. But um, putting those nuclear weapons there is really what tipped Putin over the edge. Uh, and NATO is building more forces on the border, border. And also, I was told Russia is not afraid to make the first strike. That's very concerning. Uh, I got this here from Sophia Dow uh, on Twitter, or ran across it. I don't know if I'm uh, following her or not, but it says Ukrainian family telling reporter the Ukrainian army attacking their own people and blaming the Russian army. This does happen far too often. So I want to play this clip for you here so you can see it for yourself exactly what a Ukrainian family was saying about this war going on over there. So he's asking, the, the reporter's asking, did the Ukrainians fire upon your facilities in a residential sector? sector? Did I get it right? And the witness says, yes, at the city, that side of the city. And from there they shot at us. Their own city, why? At their own people. Watch that. At their, watch that. At their own people. You know what they did? At first, when there was less of their equipment in our area, they were massively shelling our block, saying that it was the Russians who were shelling. But we could see everything was coming from. We understood what was going on. We could see it with our own eyes. We did not sleep day and night. Almost 10 days we were under massive shelling. We saw what was flying and from where. And at first, for several days straight, two to three days, they just shelled residential neighborhoods. They were just pounding them. Why? Witness. To show a picture to the entire world how Russia and the DPR are killing civilians. Uh, to, to show, okay, let's see. In the The, the lady says they believe the advance is from this side to pretend it's Russian troops. You know, there you have it right there. And, you know, appears to be a Jewish family uh, over there, on, uh, you know, uh, I may be wrong on that, but uh, that that tells you straight up. And if that's not bad enough, you might say, well, that's Sputnik, Putin. you know, that's just propaganda. Well, here, here's French television. Woman tells the truth about Ukraine live on French media. Hosts are stunned. We know you've been in contact with your family in Kiev. Have they escaped from Kiev? Of course not. Let me turn the volume down just a little bit so I no, don't read over this too bad. Of course not. They never thought about fleeing. <laughs> Tell us about the situation with your family. I came back to France from Ukraine four days ago. Nobody believed there would be a war. But a lot of rumors were causing people to leave. The root of this conflict was already starting to show in 2014. At least two million Ukrainians are living. Day-to-day -day terrible conditions. This year's heating bills are greater than before, yet wages are so low. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. People are spending half their monthly wages on heating costs. Life is indeed difficult here. Life is, I just, I was just thinking, hang on, I've got to turn it a little bit more. Why should we defend this puppet president and government? 
She just calls Zelensky a puppet president and government. I'm talking about president. Wait a minute, let me back up. I'm talking about president we have now. Not the one Putin might be planning on installing. So you're saying right now, people in the internet are saying, Ukrainians are in a different, difficult position. That's indeed true. The government is changing nonstop. The economy is tanking. Corruption is everywhere. Is she talking about Zelensky? Are you talking about Zelensky? Of course. Who else? So you are saying the democratically elected Zelensky is actually a puppet leader? Yes, and he is by no means a democratic leader. He's banned four opposition TV channels. There were also journalists who mysteriously disappeared. People say the Russian journalists are constantly killed, but Ukrainian journalists are killed as well. A lot of journalists have been killed these past few years. It's complicated. It's just that nobody talks about it. It makes no difference. So according to what you said, please let me finish. See? Yeah, they didn't want it. They want to cut her off. This is what we're not being told, friends, and I realize war is evil no matter which side it's on, but you have to understand there is a global agenda here. Um, you know, for the for the people, for the ethnic Russians that, that are that are that comprise uh, at least 40% of Ukraine, for them it's liberation. And but the problem is, it's still a global agenda. Um, I will be sharing more about this, so because the wars are going to spread, and you're going to find out about the next the next big war is, is that's coming is Iran with Saudi Arabia. Um, that's going to be mass massive. Iran with Saudi Arabia, and Israel, no doubt, will get involved in that one. Uh, China with Taiwan, we're being pushed out of the uh, out of the uh, the Far East. Uh, we are moving our own troops and assets out of Taiwan. As we speak, we're moving out. So Biden is just going to let it fall. And we'll be talking uh, this weekend also about economic collapse, Bitcoin of all things. And I've already gotten two warnings about that. It will have no value. So there are changes coming, and it is troubling to say the least. And we are really on the edge of nuclear war. And when I say that, and I know a lot of people have taken it serious about the EMP shield, uh, which that's something that really made me think as well. And I'll just share it up there and I'll share it with you for your own protection. I really felt like that they would do an EMP attack on this country so that they could change us over to an electrical car system. But I'm being told that that's not going to be the case. The infrastructure would not support that type of mass um, of being able to do uh, an electrical car system. So our vehicles need to survive if we get hit by an EMP strike in this country. Uh, so let me just uh, quickly, and I like, um, for me, the vehicle protection is the main one there. But if you decide to get one for your home, whatever the case may be, because of the threats, and we are more than likely going to face war here in this country as well, um, you, when you add that, if you decide to get one, uh, and, and just always pray about it. I, I don't like to just, I don't like people just to make rash decisions. But if you decide to get it, use that INL 50 code. It'll save you $50. And then uh, the people at EMP Show also, they, they uh, give a, per, a little percentage to us as well. So it helps the ministry. Uh, so if you decide to do that for your own good there, 
and you go to the checkout once you proceed to the checkout you will um, well here we go oh goodness didn't didn't work on my end here what did I do wrong anyway when you we let me back up so I can see it there let's see oh I didn't apply the coupon code make sure you apply that coupon code there you go now they saved you fifty dollars on your purchase and of course they have it for everything it, whether it be your home RV uh, generator models, uh, solar wind protection models. Uh, I, I don't know what the difference is personally. I just, uh, but uh, they have it. European models, three phase protection, radio protection. Um, you know that you know all kinds of these things that they have available. So if it's something that you feel that you want to get bundles, I hadn't seen that before, so I don't even know what bundles are there. So we'll just kind of look at. Okay, you can. Add your house, your car, whatever. Oh, I guess it just shows you a little bit of everything. So, but um, but you know, consider that. But every, anytime you buy one, though, it doesn't matter if you buy three, you apply the code for each one of the three, you get fifty bucks off all three of those. So, just just to let you know. And also for those of you that uh, want to support the work we do here, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate by mail. I'm actually sending out uh, letters today uh, to people uh, that have been supporting the work that we do. And uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, it is critical at this time. I can't even stress that enough right now because uh, there are things that we have not been permitted to share publicly as of yet. We will in the future, but it is uh, creating a tremendous financial hardship for us here. So we do appreciate uh, your love and your support for this ministry. Uh, you can click and donate right there online on IsraeliNewsLive.org. It uh, doesn't matter what kind of card you want to use. and uh, Or you can go by mail, Danoon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. God bless you and thank you for listening.